that I've called this spirit-filled life. And I believe that God wants to touch His people. I believe that this is a word not only for us as an assembly, but for the church and for those of you who are watching. Um, share this word with all your family and friends. Okay, so since the beginning of the church, the Acts, God's plan was that every believer should be a spirit-filled believer. And nowadays, there are so many options. I want you to get this revelation. Many people would say, oh, you know, speaking in tongues is not for me. Oh, you know, this uh, power ministry where people are falling over, this is not for me. Come on, I want you to listen now. This divine healing that they are talking about, ah, that's not my cup of tea. <laughs> This prosperity, you know, when they are teaching about getting blessed, I don't know if that's for me. Well, how dumb can you be and still breathe? Since the early church, God's plan was for every believer to be spirit-filled. Come on, you've got to support me, man. If you agree with me, say something. Say amen or say yes. But nowadays, I want you to get this revelation. People say, well, we feel we have options. So when we don't like this, we just hop. We call it, you know, you get some church hopping these days. You know what that means. People hop from one church to a, another church. When they don't like something, well, then I just hop to another church. Come on, tell your neighbor, you know hopper. Come on, you are no hopper. You see, when the Lord plants you somewhere, He wants you to grow there. Can you say amen? amen? So, since the beginning of the church in Acts, it was the will of God that every believer, you know, must become a spirit-filled believer. It's God's will that the church will be a spirit-filled church. I want you to get this. So, where did all these options coming from you know if you don't like this you just hop to another church i know that we are all different and pastors are different and styles are different and personalities are different and worship leaders are different and thank god for that come on tell your neighbor i'm so happy that i'm not like you come on just tell somebody i'm so glad that i'm not like you we are all different and thank God for that. But listen to this revelation. When it comes to the word of God, when it comes to the move and working of the Holy Spirit, we cannot compromise. And I want you to, to, to go on this journey with me. I want you to start reading the book of Acts, even today. I'm asking you. This afternoon or tonight. I want you just to obey. Just be obedient to your pastor. Let's all get on this journey as we read through the book of Acts. And I want to show you that since the early church, the church of Acts, that God's will and plan was a spirit-filled church. Come on, a church full of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? A church where there's no compromise. A church where we teach the word of God as it is. And I have a passion for the church. But I'm really, if I can put it that way, I'm a bit worried about the church, Pastor Gary. Because there are so much compromising going on in these days. As I said, if somebody doesn't like something, they just hop to another church. Let's get into the word of God. Come on. Let's see what the Word of God says about the church. Come on, about the believer. When we look to Jesus as our perfect example, we see a spirit-filled man. Are you all with me Yeah. 
Even at his baptism, the Bible says when he got out of the water, the Holy Spirit came down on him in the form of a dove. Now the Holy Spirit is not a dove. The Bible says in a form of a dove. But it shows us that the Holy Spirit was so involved even at the baptism of Jesus. Just the next chapter, you can get that in Matthew 4. Don't turn now there. The Bible says Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. So when we look to Jesus as our role model, as the perfect one, come on, the King of Kings, the Lord of the church, we see a spirit-filled man. When we look at the early church and his, his uh, leaders, the apostles, we see spirit-filled men who did not compromise when it comes to the Word of God. And I want to say something this morning, and I, and I really pray that you will also will start saying this. I am not ashamed, come on, of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I need some support here. I'm not ashamed of the Holy Spirit and His gifts. I'm not ashamed of the Holy Word of God. But we're living in a time now, let's talk about our beautiful country, where there's so much compromising going on. And people call it options. When they don't like something, well, I need another option. When we go to the book of Acts, I don't see any other options. I'm bringing you a revelation. I'm just seeing what God wants for His church. People are getting saved. In our first meeting this morning, more than 15 people gave their lives to Jesus. When you go back to the early church, it's like the pattern. It's like God's plan for the church. People got saved. People got healed. People got delivered. People got filled with the Holy Spirit. Miracles, signs and wonders uh, were happening every day. The church was spirit filled. So now my question is, what happened to the church? And please, once again, I have a passion. I love the church. But what happened to the church? If we see God's plan as a spirit-filled people, I've called my, my series a spirit-filled life, because that's really a life being filled with the Holy Spirit, I will show you now. A life being led by the Holy Spirit, that's what it is. If that was the plan of God, I mean Jesus said, go and wait until the Holy Spirit comes. If that was so important to Him as the Lord of the church, in other words, you cannot live without the Holy Spirit. You can do nothing without Him. What happened to so-called Christians and the church that are compromising and say, we don't want this. We don't want the Holy Spirit. We don't want the speaking in tongues. We don't want this miracle stuff. We don't want healing. We want, don't want this power, whatever. People are even arguing about the water baptism. What happened? Come on, I want you to think with me. What happened? Who's behind those divisions? And we know it's Satan. He hates a spirit-filled believer. He hates a spirit-filled church. Why? Because a spirit-filled church is a powerful church. If you're spirit-filled, you will go and win the lost. You will go and heal the sick. I'm equipping you this morning to go as the army of Christ and say, so go and be Jesus to a dying world. You will apply the word of God. Why? Because you choose to obey the word of God. 
That's the spirit-filled life. So I just want to share with you this revelation that the Holy Spirit has given to me. What happened to the church? This compromising stuff. And although we are all different and there's different kinds of churches and different kinds of styles, I'm not talking about that. But we, we should tell one another, we cannot compromise the Holy Word of God. We still need the Holy Spirit in 2020. Come on. We still need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We still need to be full of the Holy Ghost. So I want to encourage you. Please. I'm going to do it with you. Let's start reading the book of Acts together from today. And then you will see for yourself how the first church operated in the spirit. They were so full of the Holy Ghost. They was, were so full of power. They were so full of fire. But they were also so full of the love of Christ. Amen? So, if you have your Bible here, yeah, let's just check out a few scriptures. Acts 1. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Let's just read verse 4 and 5 and 8. And once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before. Check this out. This is Jesus speaking. He says, John baptized you with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then, verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, how many of you would agree with me this morning that it's God's will for you to be full of the Holy Spirit. It's really His will since the beginning of the church. And I just want to open the book of Acts to you. I want to show you how the first church, you know, looked like. And it's God's will for us to be so full of the Holy Spirit, man, that you will start winning the loss like never before. But yet you get so many people in the church that say, no, that's the pastor's job. While you are supposed to be so full of the Holy Spirit that you will win souls for Jesus wherever you go. Amen? That you will heal the sick wherever you go. If there's a demon in your house, you don't have to call the pastor 12 o'clock at night. You cast out the devil yourself. Come on. But you see what the problem is. There are too many Christians that are, that are not full and filled with the Holy Spirit. So, a spirit-filled life, write this down. I'm just going to give you two things this morning is a life being filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's make it easy so that people can understand it and then people can take it. The Spirit-filled life is a life being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? So just think about this now for one moment. That God the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. I mean, that is so big, it is so huge, it is so phenomenal to think that God, the Holy Spirit, lives inside of me. So, no more fear. Come on, tell your neighbor, no more fear. Come on, prophesy. Why would you fear anything if God, the Holy Spirit, lives in you? Come on, somebody. Why would you be intimidated by somebody if God the Holy Spirit lives in you? The Creator Spirit 
lives in you. So, the spirit-filled life is really a life being filled with the Holy Spirit. Check this out, Acts 2, please, verse 4. says, and everyone present. Read with me. Everyone present. Who? Everyone present was what? Filled, come on, read, with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Now, I pray that you will become so full of the Holy Spirit that demons will start running wherever you are. Come on, that the sick will get healed. How many of you have a desire for this? That wherever you go, you will change atmospheres. Hmm? We are the light of the world. And when you walk into a dark place, not only physical dark, but where there's demonic activities, you are so full of the Holy Ghost because you are a spirit-filled believer and you will change that atmosphere. You will bring the light of our Lord Jesus Christ wherever you go. I really believe that the church needs to hear this. Leaders needs to hear this. There's too much compromising going on. When I read the book of Acts, I see a spirit-filled church. I see spirit-filled believers who are not ashamed of Jesus, who are not ashamed of the Holy Spirit, who are not ashamed of speaking in tongues, come on, who are not ashamed of the gifts, who are not ashamed of revival, who are not ashamed of the power of God. I don't see any other options in the book of Acts. Get this revelation. So forget about the name of a denomination this morning or the name of a church this morning. Just read the word. Wow, Lord, is this how the early church, the first church looks like? Was that your plan? Believers full of the Holy Spirit, flowing in miracle signs and wonders on a daily basis? Yes. People getting saved, people getting baptized in water. We don't baptize babies. We only bless babies. When you're old enough to make Jesus Lord of your life, then you will get baptized. Can you say amen? We will only do, come on somebody, what the word of God says we must do. And I want to encourage you, go and read the word. So, read the book of Acts. Are you all in here? Read it for yourself. What happened? When you talk about salvation, you will read it in the early church. When you talk about water baptism, you will see it in the book of Acts. When we talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will see it in the book of Acts. Come on. When we talk about divine healing, you will see it in the book of Acts. When you talk about the church loving people, caring for the poor, you will see it in the book of Acts. In fact, the Bible says that even in the early church, there was no lack among the early church. I say, Lord, have mercy on us. You've called me to your church. The Lord spoke to me many years ago and said, I raise you up as an apostle also to restore Holy Spirit ministry. What happened to the modern church. If this was God's plan since the beginning of the church. What happened to the church? One more time. Let me repeat. Thank God for the diversity. I'm not talking against diversity. Thank God for the different personalities and preaching styles and teaching styles and worship styles. I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about the fact that people compromise the word. 
When people say, when leaders say, churches say things like, no, we don't need this any longer. We're in a modern time. We're in 2020. Well, then you can call me old school. I don't care. But give me the old time religion. The Bible does not change. Come on, Jesus doesn't change. Can I get an amen? The word of God will never change. And we cannot allow to compromise the word of God. And the Bible says in the last days, they will, they will gather themselves, teachers and preachers, to just say things that the people want to hear. To tickle the ear. The Lord help me, every pastor here, every preacher, that we will only speak the truth. Because the day will come where we will be standing before God alone. Say with me, the spirit-filled life. That's His plan for you. Are you full of the Holy Spirit? Let me challenge you this morning. If you are full of the Holy Spirit, you will win souls. You will pray for people. You will make a difference. Nobody, nobody has to ask you and say, please, please come to church. Please give, give, give. Please do something. Pray, pray, pray. Please come to the prayer meeting. No, 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 no. If you're full of the Holy Spirit, you will serve God because you love Him. The Spirit filled life. So we see in the early church, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit that day of Pentecost. And then they went out. Man, they were preaching the gospel. They were flowing in the power of God. Unashamed. So I will show you in this series how a spirit-filled life looks like. Okay, let me give you another one just for this morning. The spirit-filled life is really a life being led by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.14 is so profound. It says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God. What does the Bible say? They are all sons of God or children of God. In fact, the Bible is so serious about this that he says, this is how a child of God looks. If you say that you're a son of God, a child of God, that means you will be led by the Holy Spirit. May the Lord help us here yeah, that we will be spirit-filled and spirit-led. Can I get an amen? Before you do anything, just say, Holy Spirit, is it okay with you? What do you say, Holy Spirit? You live in me. You've been sent to me to lead me, to guide me, to help me, to comfort me. Therese, I've just come here. So the Holy Spirit lives in me. I cannot see the Holy Spirit. Let me just show you something. But I can hear the Holy Spirit's voice. I can feel the anointing. Come on. I can feel the presence of God every day. He's so real. He's God, the Holy Spirit living in me. And every day He says, I want to lead you. I want to guide you. I want to show you what to do. Check this out. I want to show you what to buy and what not to buy before you buy anything. I want to teach you how to deal with your money, how to work with your finances. I want to teach you how to treat your wife and to treat your husband because I know your husband better than you. He lives in me. We can't see him, but we can feel him. We can feel his touch. We can feel his presence. The Holy Spirit makes Jesus a reality. You cannot see Jesus without the Holy Spirit. You cannot understand the word of God without the Holy Spirit. You cannot even pray without the Holy Spirit. And yet, there's churches that say, we don't want him. And yet, there's people that say, that is not for me. We're in a modern time. And I say, Lord, have mercy on your church in South Africa. We desperately need revival. 
There's no revival without the Holy Spirit. Amen? Are you a spirit-filled believer? I want you just to think about this word this morning. I want you to go home and start reading the book of Acts. And I want you to start meditating on what I've told you this morning. Are you really spirit filled? Are you led by the Holy Spirit? Do you allow Him to speak to you before you make a decision? And so it's like the Lord says this morning. Listen to what I'm prophesying. I want my church to come back. Get back to the basics. Get back to my, my plan since the beginning of my church. And yet, let me prophesy something to you. God says, I want to even bless the church way more than the early church. That's the latter rain. That's a teaching for another day. But yet, the church is not even at that place. Well, most of the church... When we see how the church operated in the book of Acts. Are you all with me? And the Lord says, yet I want to take the church even further. More power, come on. Greater revival, greater glory. The latter reign. If the early church, the book of Acts was the first reign, the early reigns. My Lord. What about the latter reign? And that's where we are now. He wants to bless us like never before. And yet in the book of Acts, we see miracles. Like, I mean, it was phenomenal. Hmm? The spirit-filled life is a wonderful life. It's a life being filled with the Holy Ghost is a life being led by the Holy Spirit. And in every part, I will give you some, some more. Some more characteristics about the Spirit-filled life. May the Lord give you a desire to be so full of the Holy Spirit. May the gifts of the Holy Spirit be part of your life. Amen. Maybe this morning we should say, Holy Spirit, please forgive us where we were not sensitive to your voice. How many of you, when you wake up in the morning, say, good morning, Holy Spirit? Hmm? And he lives in you? And yet, many people ignore him? How many of you, when you go to bed in the night, say, good night, Holy Spirit? He lives within you. Isn't that remarkable? Can you see that was God's plan? Since the beginning, I will send you another comforter. He will lead and guide you. He will teach you. He will show you the way. It's impossible. You can write this down. To be a Christian without the Holy Spirit. It's impossible to do church without the Holy Spirit. And yet, that's what we see in many circles. Although we are relevant, come on, and friendly, and different, and there's a diversity, please get this. We don't compromise the message. We don't compromise, come on, the working of the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit in the book of Acts is this morning here. Come on, the same wonderful Holy Spirit. And Jesus, the Lord of the church, said, You've got to wait first. Wait on Him. I will pray the Father and He will send you another comfort. Isn't that wonderful? What are we doing with Him? Let me close. What are we doing with Him? What are leaders doing with the Holy Spirit? Jesus is coming back for a Spirit-filled church. Pastor Gary is coming back for a church who's lit by the Holy Ghost. Now you get people, they say, we, we, we are not Pentecost, we don't like this Pentecost stuff. And they fight the name. It's not about the name, it's about a relationship with the Holy Spirit every day. 
You get people, they fight water baptism, they fight divine healing, they fight prosperity. Are you all with me? They fight all these wonderful things that are part of the early church. Go back to the Word of God and read the Word for yourself. No, but we are not Pentecost. We are Reformed. Huh? What are you saying? The Jesus that we serve this morning is the God of Pentecost. And I'm not talking about the AFM or the name of a church. I'm talking about the Word. Pentecost, since the beginning. I don't see any other option. I see a spirit-filled church. Are you with me? I see spirit-filled lives full of the Holy Ghost, full of the love of Jesus. And then many options came in that was not from God. We can differ. Thank God for that. We need different kinds of churches. But we are not supposed to compromise the Word of God. The Spirit-filled life was God's plan and still is. He is still the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. And even when people say, I don't like this or I don't believe in this or... It doesn't matter. Jesus is still the baptizer with the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? amen? He's still the healer. It's like many people say, I don't believe in healing. What? It doesn't make any difference. Jesus is still the great healer. It's like people say, I don't believe in salvation. What? He's still the great savior. The spirit filled life. Come on, it's exciting. Let's all stand. So let's read through the book of Acts as I'm busy teaching this series. And I believe God's going to change you in a powerful way. May the Lord bless you with His power like never before. May you get a fresh baptism in the Holy Ghost. May the fire of God, come on, fill you like never before. May true Pentecost, come on, come to your house. Just be careful. Can I just give you a great word of wisdom? For those of us who've been in Pentecost many years. I was born in the church. I was almost born with a mic. A fourth generation Pentecostal preacher. I love the church. But please be careful that you don't think you know it all. Let's humble ourselves this morning and say, Holy Spirit, fill me again. Come on, somebody, lift your hands. Fill me with your power, with your fire, with your wisdom, with your love. Fill me. I want to be a spirit-filled Christian. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Wow. Wow. Mm. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, we thank you for the word this morning. Your anointed word that brings life, that brings healing, that brings hope. And Lord, how I pray that you will fill us all with your power, with your fire, with your glory. Holy Spirit, just come. We want you to lead us. We want you to guide us. We want you, Lord, to, to use us in a wonderful way. And I pray that all our people will be inspired by this message. That a new fire will come. Hallelujah, Lord, that, that they will go now and ignite fires wherever they go. Yes, thank you for Pentecost. You are the God of Pentecost. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you came. It's our desire to be so full of you, Lord. Come on, just pray this with me with hands uplifted. Say, Lord, I want to be so full of the Holy Spirit. We read in the book of Acts how the leaders were full of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Lord, we bring you praise, we bring you glory, and we bring you honor. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen.